So there's a lot of things to think about when it comes to uh, shooting with an optic. What optic are you gonna run? What rings are you gonna run? What's gonna be proper for your application of shooting that you're gonna be doing, whether it's target shooting, whether it's three gun, whether it's actively hunting. Those are all things that you kind of have to think about. So first thing that I always go with is choosing the right rings and choosing the right optic. Those are the two factors, right, that you're gonna take into account. If it's hunting, you're gonna wanna go with a little bit better magnification, a little clearer glass, something that's gonna see a little bit better in the dark or as those twilight hours come. If it's three gun, you know, it depends on where you're shooting three gun, if you're just needing a red dot or if you need a red dot and a magnifier or if you need, you know, an, uh, low powered variable optic. Um, some guys just like running red dots. Today we're gonna to be talking about mounting an actual magnified scope. So let's just go ahead and move into it. One of the first things uh, that I always like to do before starting is making sure I've got all my tools out. Uh, I like fix-it sticks, they're really easy to use. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be using today. Um, so I got my uh, ratcheting T-handle out, I got my torque limiter, I got the right bit in there already, I'm already prepped. I got my parallels out, um, I've got my levels out, of course the scope, the rings, and the rifle. So looks like everything's in order, let's just jump into it. Um, first thing you always want to do is make sure you got a clear and safe weapon, obviously. So there it is, I'm peeking, she's clear, she's safe. Okay, I don't like to mount anything while the rifle's together and resting on the bipod. Bipods are too wiggly, they just, it just doesn't work, right? You're gonna, you're gonna be fighting your levels the whole entire time. So we're gonna separate the upper and lower, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out your bolt carrier group and your charging handle just so that they don't fall out on the floor, you don't drop them. Fold your bipod to get it out of the way, okay? <clears throat> so now we're left with just the upper receiver. I like to clamp my stuff in the vise, firearms in the vise as, as we're working on them. That way, they don't move, I'm not gonna drop it, it's not going anywhere, okay? Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna level this whole apparatus, okay? Don't level off of the handguard, Hand guards can get tweaked, they move around, they twist, uh, all kinds of stuff can happen. You drop it, you bend it, now, now everything's off, right? So, I'll go ahead and level off of the receiver itself. And this goes for hunting rifles, it goes for, for any of that. Don't level off of the barrel, don't level off of the stock, level off of the actual receiver itself. So, hey, we're pretty close already. So you loosen it a little bit, give it a little tweak. Sometimes it's easier said than done. There it is, level. I'm not too worried about axial level, just worried about rotational level right now. So, pull that guy off and get him out of the way. I like these levels from Fix-It Sticks because the nut comes all the way off. So you can slide it in under a low profile mount, super easy to use. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our set of rings and we're gonna throw them up on the gun. This is a vertical set of, set of rings, vertical split set of rings. So they're a little bit easier to mount. They're a little tricky. Sometimes you can end up dropping your scope, but if you're cautious, they're, they're easier than, than other rings. I like to start about there. And we're just gonna go ahead and run these screws in till they're kind of tight. Not too worried about torquing them down yet because we may move this mount uh, to adjust for eye relief. 
once we get the gun back together. Okay, there's that guy. Now we're gonna pull the rings off because they're in the way. These style rings actually slide apart. You can't just pull them apart. They're interlocking. So, see that? It's got a little lip right there. So, just set that guy off to the side. So, I'm very old school. I'm very particular um, when it comes to mounting stuff, especially rings. A lot of times, rings will develop a memory for a particular scope. So, if you're unmounting and remounting or just re leveling, Make sure and keep your rings oriented correctly. Rear one goes on the rear, front one goes on the front. That way everything's, everything's happy, everything's copacetic. So next thing I'm gonna do, pick up my scope, take a peek at it, make sure there's no dings or dents or anything like that. Everything looks good still. And then we're just gonna cradle it in the mount right there. Secure it with one hand, especially with these vertical split rings. Horizontal split rings, you don't have to worry about them as much because the scope will literally, literally just rest in the rings. So, got my back ring going on here. Sometimes it's hard with one hand. Slide that guy on there. Now, pinch that guy. Scope's not gonna go anywhere. Now, you can tighten these screws back up. At this point, don't tighten them too much because we're not mounting the scope just quite yet. We're gonna get the other ring on. You're just holding the scope in place. We got that front guy going on there. One of the nice things about a one-piece mount like this one is you don't have to worry about uh, where your rings are placed on the receiver. Or whether your scope will fit. So, it's in there. It's not going anywhere. We're gonna double check level. Use the back of the receiver this time because we can get to it. Still level. And take our little magnetic bubble level, place them right on top of there. Of course, it's hard because it's an aluminum scope with aluminum rings. So, basically, what we're going to do here is loosen these screws just a hair so that you can move the scope inside the rings and adjust the scope. As you tighten stuff up, when those rings grab that scope, it's gonna pull that scope and it's gonna make that scope off kilter again. It's gonna make it out of level. And so you wanna offset that scope out of level in the opposite direction so that as you tighten your rings down and torque them, that scope comes back into level. So you gotta compensate a little bit. Once you do this a couple of times, you'll get a feel for it. It'll, it'll become kind of second nature. So everything's level, everything's torqued down. As the other thing to note is that with multiple screws on your rings, you wanna go back and forth as you torque them down to make sure that once you get them there, that your screws don't move when, when you're screwing it in and your torque limiter goes and not the screws moving. Because if the screws are still moving, then you're not torqued to spec. These aren't moving, then we're good. So, we can put that down. We're all mounted up, all level. I don't know about my eye relief though, because there's no stock on the gun. So, next thing you wanna do is go ahead and check your eye relief. So we're gonna put the upper and the lower back together and double check eye relief. Won't worry about the bolt carrier right now. So, the stock adjusted to the proper length of pull, which this one is. I'm gonna grab that rifle, 
I'm gonna put it up to my eye and I'm gonna come down on it and I'm gonna see what we got as far as sight picture in there. If there's too much black ring, the scope needs to go forward. If it's foggy and hazy and you're not seeing the entire reticle, the scope needs to move back. So this guy needs to come forward just a little bit. Now I can rest it on the bipod because the scope is actually locked into these rings. So I can release the rings from the base, from the receiver, and move that scope where I need it to be for the proper eye relief. So you just loosen those guys up. Peel that mount off of there. I'm gonna move it forward one notch on the rails. Sometimes you just gotta loosen it a little bit more. There we go. Now make sure and torque at least a couple of these screws down tight so that when you lift that rifle up, your whole optic doesn't fall off. There's those. I'm gonna double check it. That's proper eye relief. Now that that's mounted and exactly where I want it to be, I'm gonna go ahead and torque these screws down the rest of the way. Be careful when mounting your optic not to mount the optic to the rail, to the handguard. Like I said earlier, handguards can get screwed up. Receivers can't. So everything's torqued down. Eye relief is set good. Now all I gotta do is put the rest of the guts back in it. Parallels are really easy. Typically they come with a large one and a small one. Most of the time, all you're gonna need is a small one. And the way these work is if you've got a flat spot on your mount, on your one piece mount, you can lay this guy in there. Basically the way that it works is as you slide, it's got a, a groove cut out of it at the proper angle. So as you slide that guy up there, that gives you two parallels to work with so that you know that your scope is parallel or level with your receiver. So as you sli slide that guy up in there, you can bring it up till it touches, this guy might not, touches the bottom of that scope, making sure that everything is where it needs to be. And that's how those work. So <clears throat> what you would do like on two piece rings is you'd clamp those rings down and slide your parallels in there and adjust your scope so that it was parallel and then torque down your, uh, your horizontal split rings to the proper torque and then you can remove those. So those are some of the basics of mounting a scope to a rifle, particularly an AR pattern rifle with a one piece mount. Um, mounting those horizontal split rings is not all that different. You just gotta double check everything as you go, making sure that everything's level and everything is, is true. So next thing that you're gonna wanna do after you've got all this stuff put together, scopes mounted, leveled, guns back together, is you're gonna wanna take it out to the range after bore sighting and put it on paper and get that grouping nice and tight. Hopefully we've answered all of your questions. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you next time.